Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of the presentation about how to use a Word document to analyze your data. So first, one, the first step is to label your research question. So as you can see here, the label uh, for the first research question is initial needs and the label for the second research question is at activity. So based on the content of the research question, you just give um, yeah, a, a label. Um, by just uh, uh, putting a phrase or a word there just to represent um, your research question that you have. As I told you in you know, the first presentation, the essence is to help you to organize the code that you're going to develop based on the participant information they have given you. So after that, you go to your data and um, this you can see here that this is participant responses um, they were asked about the experience in the club and this is what they, uh, each of them gave um, it's um, uh, because of time I want to give you a lot of background information about the how the data was collected but it's just to find out their perception about uh, a club that were um, was, was established to help them deal with the uh, trauma and I think that is um, so you these, these are your responses and then what you have to do after you have labeled your research question you go through each of the participant information uh, first you um, identify significant information and then decide which research question is this information going to um, address so when you decide let's say this uh, part um, is uh, I think I've already done this so this part is addressed in the research question related to ability right so um, what you have to do is to highlight uh, select that and go to review okay it will be a home so you go to review and go to new comment and then you have to first decide, okay, which research question is this one addressed? So let's say it is addressing a research question related to participant ability, right? So you first type the anchor code called ability and the column. I normally uh, make it bold so that it will be different from the level of the significant information or the nodes that are going to create. So, and then um, and I sometimes make it italics for the label. So for for this, um, you ask yourself, what label should I use that will directly address the research question related to participant ability? Maybe sense of confidence. Right. So you can see here that I have sense of confidence here. I can make it... Um, uh, just uh, italic so you can see that the first information here is the anchor code or the label that you gave to the research question and here is the node that it came up with right so you do the same thing for the rest of the statement you go through if it's a significant information you highlight you select it and then you go to review and you go to comment and then you'll be able to provide that information there. You, whenever you are providing the comment and, and um, as I say you always start with the specific um, anchor code right so let's say this for this significant information is going to address the research question related to initial needs right and then you column and you um, make it bold right and then the next one is the label for this research question and uh, uh, this significant information you always when you are about to label you always have to look at the existing labels that we have given and see okay is there any existing labels that can represent this new information if there's no existing label that you come up with a new label right so you always want to look into the existing labels that you have given or the codes that you have given and see whether the new identified information here um, any of the code can represent that if none of them then you create a new code and make sure that the code are directly addressing the research question and as, as I said you have to 
identify the coding method that will be relevant for your study before or uh, relevant for the analysis before you start the coding process so that there will be consistency across uh, the responses and I talk about a little bit a little bit about the coding methods in um, my first presentation um, so you go through all the data and do the same thing here you high identify significant information you determine the um, the anchor code or the research question that are, that is that this significant information is going to help to address and then you bring the anchor code of the research question first and then you bring the label that's the code second um, so that's what I did for all these things so after you finish the code initial coding process you have to compile them how do you do that you first click on the first comment right and then click on uh, on your computer PC you click on uh, or you click on you click on uh, shift and hold it right and then you click on down arrow and then you can see that will highlight all or to select all the significant information or all the nodes all the codes that you have developed so you click on it until you reach the last part um, it, it looks like it's finished when it's finished you can see here that uh, I only monetized from here um, you can start it all over again and see uh, when it's finished you can see that the numbers stopped or it will not go um, um, change anymore so let's do it again um, you start with the first one you hold on the shift key and then you click on down arrow and then you can see that it's highlighting all of them I think the numbers are not changing but I think the most important thing is that make sure that you highlight everything it moves you know you, you can see the page first find out what, uh, num, num, the number of pages that you have so if the number of pages reach the final one it will show here so that you can so that okay for this one I, ha I have only two pages right so when it's two of two then I stopped right so make sure that you click everything and go down and make sure that everything has been selected then you right click any of them and then click on copy and then you bring it maybe under this or you can open a new um, document and bring this under so you can see that all your codes and the anchor codes that uh, you uh, came up with they are all here so then what do you do next first of all you have to know the number of statements that you assign labels to so in order to have know the total number of statements you just highlight, uh, select all of them and just click on this one and you can see here that there are um, for this data I, uh, I identify 34 statement and I assign label to them so in all 34 statement you have to take note of this is because when you are presenting your findings it's going to be in, um, important for you to tell your audience how many total statement that you uh, identify as significant in addressing your research question um, here you can see that no um, code was developed so you can delete that it's not important just a code so in all you're going to have 33 insignificant statements right and then the next step is to arrange the uh, information here in alphabetical order so that you can group them based on the anchor code based on the research question that you have right so how do you do that if I take out the um, normally what I do is that I'll just copy this one and then go down here and then um, for I leave this here for reference so that you will not you know that um, you can come back and notice that you have 33 statements that has been coded so you copy and paste and you work on this one so after you've pasted 
um, I think that this one uh, you just copy it again and take off the numbers there so you can see that there's no numbers for this one and then arrange it alphabetical order so you just click on this one and then the A to Z and then you just click on OK so you can you can see that it has a range based on your anchor codes or based on the research question. So you can see you can separate them, and then you can start the coding um, categorization process, right? So you separate all of them. So this one is for research question related to activities. You can see the research question related to initial need, and the research question related to abilities, right? So you can see here that. Um, this is where you um, tally the frequencies, right? So the frequency is how many times that significant information was assigned to a specific data. So you can see that here, sense of confidence was assigned one, two, three, four, four times to um, the statements in the data. So you take out the um, three of them and then in parentheses you type four. So you just, uh, this means that sense of confidence was assigned four times. You do the same thing to the rest. You can see here that uh, reaching out I was assigned um, one, two, three, four. So you take out the three of them and then in parentheses you type four so you just count them and just put them in um, put the number you are telling the number of items and um, number of codes that was assigned to the statement so this is what i have to show you here uh, i've already done that so you can see what i did here and in case that 110 statements uh, were coded. Um, you can see you can see 110 statements here. And then I, um, I put them in alphabetical order. And after that, I, I tell you them, right? So that you help you to know the number of codes that was created. So based on this, you just count the number of codes uh, created uh, with the respective code. So you can see that one, two, three codes were created under ability. One, two, three, four, co um, uh, I think 11 codes were created. So based on that, you'll be able to know the number of codes created based, uh, based on the research question. Then you move to the next stage where you categorize it, right? So you can see that um, this is related to this research question, right? You put a research question there, you have a box where you find out whether you can put everything together, right? You find out whether you can put, um, um, are they, are all of them, um, referring to something, a meaning or a code or um, a theme. So for this one, you can see you can see that they are all making reference to the sense of confidence, right? So you can bring everything together, and under that you have um, categories. So based on this, you can group them into themes and categories. So this is quite simple to do. So um, you can just use, you go to insert, if you want to create this, um, you can go to insert and you go to shapes and you'll be able to identify what kind of shape that you want. In this case, I want this one, so you paste it here and you make it nicely um, and you can bring it here as I have it here. So. Um, just demonstrating it to you and then you can create a box you go to insert and then you click on test box and you can create you can create a test box here and you'll be able to first paste your research question and then um, you can indicate the themes and the categories that you have created
So this is how I was able to develop this and you can give them different colors um, just to help you to um, organize the themes and the categories that you're going to create. So this is how I did it. Um, same thing here and um, I indicate in colors so that to be easy for us uh, for me to do the categorization and so you can see here that um, I combine this code and then label it as this one and um, you always have to make sure that they are addressing your research question right because that's the reason why you are doing the code you identify significant information that will help you to address your research question so any code that you develop make sure that they are in line with the research question so this is how I did it and then um, I was able to um, create some um, diagrams. I think I showed you in the first presentation diagrams that you could use to create. And I think you can create a table, you can create, uh, you can use CMAP to create um, um, diagram like this in terms of finding out the relationship between the themes that you have created. You can use uh, Weddle.net to create um, Word cloud that will show the um, the uh, how um, the the words that participants use and how frequent they use those words in uh, expressing themselves. So this is a short presentation concerning how to use um, Microsoft Word to do the present uh, to analyze the qualitative data. I just want to stress that this is. Um, um, you use Microsoft Word or you conduct ma a manual coding when you don't have a huge data. If you have a very big data, um, I would recommend that you should use a software, um, a qualitative software to do the analysis. But if you don't have much data, uh, the participant responses are were very short, then you could use uh, Microsoft Word to um, do the manual coding. Thank you. and. Um, you could subscribe to this um, um, presentation and I'll be um, uploading a lot of presentation on coding and qualitative analysis and research methods. Thank you for your time.